Yo, Firefly will be releasing very soon in Honkai Star Rail because patch 2.3 is right around the corner. So let's go ahead and build ourselves a very powerful Firefly. Let's get into this. There will be timestamps down below, so if you want to skip ahead, go ahead and do so. So I just wanted to briefly go over some of Firefly's kit so that we not only understand how to play the character, but also how to build the character as well. So most of her damage is going to be coming from her enhanced damage state known as the Combustion State. This is similar to Jing Liu's Enhanced State, where most of the damage on the character comes from the Enhanced Damage State, and the damage falls off like a stone outside of that damage state. But thankfully, Firefly can get into that damage state very, very often because of how well she can gain energy. The way you activate this damage state is by using her ultimate. Her ultimate doesn't actually deal any damage, it just gives her a bunch of flashy bells and whistles, aka she gets an enhanced basic attack and an enhanced skill. And you're going to want to use this skill literally every single time, whether she's in this damage state or not. So just forget that Firefly even has a basic attack. Just delete that thing off of your account, okay? It's like most other DPS characters. You don't even have to level that basic attack, right? You could level it, but it's not necessary. This makes it easier to farm the character. You don't have to use as much resource. So take this as a blessing, okay? Not like a hindrance, all right? When Firefly is not in her damage state, her normal skill gives her 60 energy just for using it, and it doesn't stop there. But this is really, really good and very, very powerful because most characters only get 30 energy after they use a skill. So this is an interesting situation, but it's very necessary because her energy cost for her ultimate isn't a massive 240. They simply did not need to make this number that big. They could have just made every other number smaller and you wouldn't have had to go as high. But I think that because this is such a highly anticipated character, and because I guess Sam is technically a mech suit, they probably just wanted to give us a big, fat, juicy number to look at for whatever reason. I mean, bigger number, bigger dick, am I right? So Sam's hog is probably massive. Anyways, Sam's normal skill, true to any destruction character, will consume a large chunk of her own HP in order to generate an even larger amount of energy. This energy cost is really high, so she's going to gain a ton of energy off of this. Between her normal skill and her talent, which we'll get into more in just a second, but part of her talent, at the start of battle, if her energy was less than 50%, she will automatically go up to 50%, even if it was at zero. Between her normal skill and her talent, she's going to be able to ultimate on turn one, which is massive. And it's very, very convenient for the character because she needs to be in that ultimate enhanced state in order for her damage to really work. She's also going to deal a ton of fire damage off of this skill to a single target enemy. And if the current HP is not sufficient to be able to do this, she can only be reduced down to one HP, just like Jing Liu. She can't kill herself using this skill. It also enables her to be able to gain her action advance forward by 25%. So since we briefly went over her talent, let's go over the rest of it right now. The lower her HP is, the less damage that she receives. There is a cap to this, and at that cap, it's practically like having a Fushuan on the field, but just for Firefly, because she's that special. <laughs> <laughs> and during her combustion state, she also takes a reduced amount of damage at that maximum, even if she wasn't there. She also takes a huge amount of effect resistance during her combustion state as well. So basically, she turns herself into a lightning rod. She deals a ton of damage, and because she's the destruction character, the enemies are naturally attracted to attaching her. This also could gain her energy during this situation as well, which is everything that you want for the character. So it's kind of like balancing the character out. She reduces her damage in order to be able to, or she reduces her HP, sorry, in order to be able to get into her combustion state. And then while she's in her combustion state, she takes a reduced amount. By the way, she takes a reduced amount outside of her combustion state as well. It's just always at that maximum reduction when she's in her combustion state. So enemies aren't going to probably be able to hurt her that much because she's going to also be gaining energy during her combustion state as well. And we'll get into that in just a moment. I just wanted to briefly also state as well, we said it earlier, but if the battle starts and she has less than 50% energy, she will automatically be taken to 50% energy, even if she didn't have any whatsoever. Once she reaches her maximum energy cap, 
It dispels all debuffs on her as well, allowing her to be able to activate her ultimate even if she was crowd controlled, which is huge. Now let's briefly go over her ultimate. Upon use, she enters her enhanced combustion state and her action is advanced forward 100% and of course she gains that enhanced basic attack and that enhanced skill. But I already told you to throw that basic attack out the window and just use her skill every single time. And while she's in this combustion state, she also gains 75 speed. Just because she gains this speed during this combustion state doesn't mean you should ignore speed speed is probably the second most important stat on the character so don't ignore it she just gets a bunch during this state and while she's in this state she also increases the weakness break efficiency by 50 percent and also the break damage received by the enemy by 25 percent obviously you're going to want to build her for a super break team with the harmony trailblazer and if you can with ron may as well she is a break character at the end of the day and those are the two best break supports in the game as it stands right now these effects for the break effect and the enemy target received will last until the end of that particular action so definitely keep that in mind but she also has a combustion state that appears on the action order so you can keep track of when she has that combustion state it's essentially on a countdown order when she exits her combustion or when she hits the countdown she will exit the combustion state and she has a fixed uh speed on that countdown as well of 70 so again she's faster than the countdown so you should be good to go and she obviously wants to be built for a ton of speed to enable her to be able to get more actions as she can while she's in this state before that countdown goes out. Now let's talk about this enhanced skill. With her enhanced skill, she's able to actually gain some HP back, which is also very important to her kit because she used HP in order to get herself to this point. So you want to make sure she doesn't go down. She also deals a fat, juicy amount of fire damage to the main target that you are attacking, but she also hits the targets to the right and left of that target. So just like any other destruction character, she hits three units at the same time, most of the damage going to the main one that you're applying that damage to, and then the ones to the right and left are the ones that take the kind of like the fallout damage. But she also is trying to break, so keep in mind you need to have a ton of break effect on this character, and be aware that she is capped with this particular effect. She's capped at 360% break effect. So that means you really, really want to get 360% break effect on her in order to be able to maximize her damage output. You're not going to be hitting very, very powerful numbers outside of it. It's not a requirement, but I mean, dude, let's be honest. You need to hit that 360%, bro. You got to you gotta get there. You got to get there. Now, Acheron, watch out because Firefly's technique might be the coolest technique in the entire game, even cooler than Acheron's. Firefly launches herself into the air as Sam, and when she plunging attacks back down, she initiates combat, and this basically every single wave, she's able to apply a fire weakness to all enemies, lasting for two turns, and if she's able to get into that combustion state during that time, obviously she's going to deal a ton of damage to them. She also deals fire damage equal to a certain amount of her attack to all enemies, which is nuts. Now, obviously, Sam is going to be best utilized against a fire weak enemy, but even if they're not fire weak, she does have a trace that allows her to still do toughness damage to enemies, even if they're not fire weak, which is obviously very, very important to a break effect type of character like she is, because you have to reduce their toughness damage in order to get that break damage. So it's vital that she has this trace and that you activate this trace for her the moment that you get her. Now, Firefly has two break points for her break effect associated to one one of her traces it's at 200 and 360 so you definitely want to be able to build her to 360 break effect to really maximize her damage not only because of her enhanced skill but also because of this trace because when you do land a break on the enemy that you are breaking if it's at 200 you will get a 35 percent super break damage and if it's at 360 percent you will get a 50 percent super break damage obviously that 50% is going to be better than 35%. It's just math. Now, the last thing I want to go over, which is very important about Firefly's kit, is that attack percent is actually very important on her as well. Obviously, break effect and speed are the most important, but attack percent is very important on her too, because she has a trace that for every 10 of Sam's attack that exceeds 1,800, it increases Sam's break effect by 0.8%. This does not seem to be capped, now, obviously, you're going to want to mainly focus on break effect and speed, so the attack percent doesn't necessarily matter as far as like capping it or trying to hit some massive number that's outrageous or anything like that. But this also means that building attack percent is not only good for her for her breaks, because breaks do get something off of the attack, 
and they don't actually get anything really off of the crits or the crit damage. It's very minimal in comparison, and she gets more break effect the more attack that you have on her. So definitely try to build some very solid attack stats on her because it's very important for her kit. Let's go over some relics real quick. Obviously, we're going to go over relics, then we're going to go over the main stats and substats after that, followed by light cones and, of course, character synergy slash teams. Now, unfortunately for us, we cannot farm Firefly's best in slot relic set right now. It won't be releasing until she releases in patch 2.3, which is a sad day for us all. You guys all know how bad relic rolls can sometimes be, so you usually need a lot of time to farm out a character in order to get good stat rolls on the character. So we'll probably have to use some filler gear until we can farm out better gear for her once she releases. Now, good filler gear that we can use is of course the natural draw the four piece thief set it gives it the two piece bonus of a break effect bonus of 16 percent and the four piece increases the wear's break effect by 16 percent again and then after the wear inflicts weakness break on the enemy it regenerates three energy obviously this can be really helpful to a break effect character that wants energy like firefly so this four piece bonus is really good you could also run the two piece of this and also the two piece of the watchmaker set because the two piece of this is the same as the four piece thief set it increases the break effect by 16 percent and when the wearer uses their ultimate on an ally well let's just go ahead and scrub that four piece bonus right because that four piece bonus is only good on somebody like harmony trailblazer for example you wouldn't really want this on a dps so you could use the two piece of the watchmaker you could use the four piece of the thief set you could use the two piece of both you could also combine the two piece of either of those with the two piece of the traversing hacker space because this gives you a six percent speed bonus which is incredibly powerful on firefly she wants a ton of speed and you're gonna want at least you want to get around 156 speed on her if you can that would be ideal you could go higher a lot of us like to see 161 speed because that is a break point outside of her ultimate buff state that would be nice to have however it is really good to get her to 156 um it, because this because of the amount of speed she gives herself in combat too it can help out a whole lot so 156 is kind of like a, a a good place for her to be any more speed beyond that though is just all the better but of course don't lose out on break effect or attack percent if you don't have to 156 is totally fine okay so just keep that in mind this is a really good option for a two-piece bonus and a lot of people don't necessarily realize that the fourth piece quantum is actually incredibly strong on break effect characters because unfortunately break effect characters uh they only deal damage mostly during their breaks and so outside of their breaks and even during their breaks ignoring the enemy's defense could be incredibly powerful for a break effect character this four piece quantum set has been a top tier set on literally every single dps in the entire game because the more defense you ignore, the better you are for damage. And so if you run a defense down team with that character, it will only increase the amount of uh, the defense that you're basically ignoring with a character. So this allows you to ignore 10% uh, defense, but also 20% defense, or sorry, 10% and then 20% total if you are able to have that enemy weak to quantum. Obviously, you would ideally run this with a defense down type of character as well as her. So just something to keep in mind, this four piece quantum set, believe it or not, has higher damage potential than these break sets, if you can believe it. Now, it's a little bit harder to use, unfortunately, and it's a little bit more like niche in some degree but and so these are more reliable i guess you could say but the quantum set does have higher potential so definitely keep that in mind if you happen to have a really really good quantum set lying around this is really strong just unfortunate for us that we've probably been building our quantum set for crit damage and things like that and unfortunately for us firefly doesn't really want to be built for crit you can build her for crit but if you actually take a look at her damage potential with attack instead her attack also can buff her break effect. So in her case, having her built for attack and break effect and speed are the most important things for her. I wouldn't really focus on crit too much. You can, like I said, but I wouldn't focus on it if you can get attack percent speed and break effect on her. That's better than having crit on her, at least right now. Now, unfortunately for us, once again, as far as the planar sets are concerned, Firefly's best in slot planar set is not gonna be releasing until she releases in patch 2.3. This means we can't farm this out. However, there will be an event 
during patch 2.3 that will give us more drops on these particular sets so definitely like helpful uh but i mean come on hoyaverse why don't you guys release the set just like yeah i don't know a patch early that way we can actually prepare for the characters instead of having to grind when they actually release <laughs> what do i know though i'm just a person right anyways her best in slot set is by far going to be the better one to go for for her but beyond that actually a really solid set of course is talia's uh, kingdom of banditry this is a really solid set it gives the wearer increases the break effect by 16 percent and when the wearer's speed reaches 145 or higher the wearer's break effect increases by an extra 20 percent now obviously i mentioned earlier that you want to try to go for like 156 or maybe even 161 speed on her if you can get there and that would automatically trigger this particular set so definitely something you would want to go for now if you are going to use this set you at least want to hit 145 with her obviously the more speed the better on her this set is a very very good option and unfortunately for us as far as farming her out it's going to take you probably a long amount of time to farm out her best in slot sets so having talia on her day one is probably not something that will be replaced for quite some time because i'm actually going to just point this out to you guys this particular set is not that much further behind her best in slot planar set as far as the four piece set goes her best in slot set is, is significantly better than the other sets but in this case with the planar set talia is really not that far behind her best in slot set now another good option you can go with is space stealing station of course because this does give you some attack bonus which could be very helpful for her she gets some break effect off of her attack because of the way her kit is built this also gives you a pretty solid amount because everybody's gonna have 120 speed on her so this set could give you 24 percent attack in total with all of this popping off at the right time i would suggest going after talia though if i was you guys this is definitely going to be the one to go for i really it's not even in my opinion this is just going to be the one to go for until you can get something better from her new set now you could go with something like sprightly von wax because you would automatically give her the opportunity to attack first over anybody else it also means though she's going to end up getting her ultimate state before she gets buffed up so i would wait to use her ultimate until after you are able to buff or debuff with your other characters just something to keep in mind don't automatically click her ultimate if you use this set on her obviously this is not her best set this is just not going to be as good it's just an option and i wouldn't go with the pentacony set in this case because although the energy regen is good off of sprightly and that speed that that first turn really good start is really good on sprightly the energy regen on this unfortunately just doesn't compete with sprightly because you get more from sprightly on her than you would from the pentacony set so i would leave this one behind and i would mainly focus on talia now as far as the main stats are concerned this one's actually pretty easy for the body piece you're gonna want an attack body piece because she gets a lot off of attack more so than other break effect characters do as far as the boots are concerned it is speed boots speed boots speed boots she needs those bitches okay she, her boots are made for walking and that's just what they will do they need to get her from point a to point b and they need to get her there fast now as far as a orb is concerned you want to go with an attack orb obviously because she wants to get that extra break effect off of it and when she does break it does take a little bit off of the attack not much but again it's mostly her kit that gives her that break effect from the attack now obviously with the rope you're gonna want to go for a break effect rope she's a break effect character the main stats thankfully are no brainers and thankfully the sub stats are also no brainers as well you obviously want a ton of break effect on her you want a ton of speed on her you want attack percent if you can get it flat attack is you know what i mean something you'd have to settle for if you don't get that attack percent and you could roll some crit rate on her as well because in my opinion you just don't want to focus on crit with her she gets so much more out of attack than she would other characters that are built around breaks so i would definitely go for that if i was you um and obviously because of that you're probably gonna want the crit rate 
rather than going for the crit damage. So just something to keep in mind. The three main stats are speed, break effect, attack percent. You could also use that last slot as a bit of a filler slot, like something like defense or HP, something like that. Things like effect hit rate do nothing on her, for example. Now, as far as light cones are concerned, once again, her signature light cone is going to be her best in slot. It increases the wear's break effect by 60%, and when the wear deals break damage to an enemy target, it inflicts routed on the enemy, lasting for two turns. Targets inflicted with routed receive 24% increased break damage from the wearer, and their speed is lowered by 20% which is a very, very good thing for her because she wants to be built for a lot of speed. And as long as she's faster than them, it's a pretty good thing for her. Now, unfortunately, as far as the other light cones are concerned, we're going to have to take a look at what we have to sort of settle for, I guess you could say. But there are some pretty good options. As you can see here, we have Indelible Promise at Super Imposition 5. It increases the wearer's break effect by 56%. When the wearer uses their ultimate, it increases their crit rate by 30%, lasting for two turns. That actually is pretty good for her because she will get a crit rate increase during her combustion state, which would be pretty darn good. Now, like I said, you probably mostly want to focus on the attack with her, but getting some extra crit rate out of this while also getting some break effect could be good depending on the build that you are going for. Now, I think it should go without saying that On the Fall of an Aeon is a 5-star light cone that quite literally every player can get their hands on. This is a very, a very solid light cone. It looks cool, and it's just it's simply a very good cone. Whenever the wearer attacks, their attack is increased by 8%. In this battle, this effect can stack up to 4 times. After a character inflicts weakness break on an enemy, the wearer's damage increases by 12% for 2 turns. So this is obviously very good very good for her because she wants to break enemies already and she's going to get an attack bonus from this which will in turn give her more break effect so this surprisingly doesn't say break effect break effect break effect on it but it in turn gives her break effect because of how she's sort of built so great choice on the fall of an aeon let's move on to some other options blades cone however pretty solid if you are going to go for crits it increases the wearer's crit rate by 18 percent and increases their HP by 18 when the wearer is attacked or consumes their own HP, which she does do, their damage increases by 24%. This effect is removed after the wearer uses their attack. So this is actually a very, very good cone for her because it gives her two things that she really, really wants. And it gives her some extra HP. She wants HP probably because she's hurting herself in order to deal damage. So Blades Cone, a very, very solid option for her. Now Flames of Far... When the wearer is when the wearer's cumulative HP loss during one attack exceeds 25% of their max HP, or if the amount of their own HP consumed at one time is greater than 25% of their max HP, it immediately heals the wearer by 15% of their max HP. And at the same time, it increases the damage they deal by 25% for two turns. This effect oh hold on. Let me let me take that up to the right amount. It should be by 50% for two turns. This effect can only be triggered once every three turns. So this is a pretty solid cone. As you can see, Sam is literally on the cone. So this is definitely an option that you can pick up from the Forgotten Halls shop. Dealing 50% increased damage for two turns is pretty solid. And giving her those heals is pretty darn good as well. So there's clearly a multitude of options you can use with this character. Those are the main ones I want to go over. Let's just go ahead and take a look at Secret Vow. It increases the damage dealt by 40%. And when the wearer deals an extra, sorry, the wearer deals an extra 40% of damage to enemies whose current HP percentage is equal to or higher than the wearer's current HP percentage. So this cone is good on her because it gives that 40% damage increase. And because she is constantly reducing her own damage, depending on how things go in combat, you could get that other 40% increased damage as well. This could end up being a very, very, very solid cone at super in position 5. So definitely consider Secret Vow if you got it. Now, as far as character synergy is concerned, you obviously have a ton of options with Firefly. You have characters like Ting Yun who can end up giving an attack buff as well as energy. You have characters like Robin who can give crit damage as well as attack and also action advance forward, which is really, really powerful, especially on a character like Firefly. And if you are going to be going with a crit style build, you can go with Sparkle because this gives you a ton of crit damage. After building a ton of break effect, speed, and attack on your Firefly, you might not have a lot of stats to be able to allocate towards crit if you are building that. Now, I did say that you might want to skip out on the crit for her because it's usually beneficial to not necessarily go for the crit, but some of you are going to go for crit anyways, and Sparkle will be your girl to support Firefly in that type of a scenario. 
but obviously you have characters like Branya who will buff overall damage more than anything else and that's something that will be beneficial to a character like Firefly who it, it, unfortunately she's more of a niche character so buffing her overall damage would be something very beneficial to you Branya is able to do that now of course the bread and butter characters are going to be Ron May this is peanut butter and jelly Ron May Firefly, and of course the Harmony Trailblazer. These three are break effect characters. Group them together. Let them do what they want to do, which is break effect synergy. That is what they want to do. Now, of course, if you're going to be running the Quantum set on your Firefly, you want to consider somebody like Pela, who's able to debuff all enemies at once because Pela again debuffs all enemies at once and Firefly hits three enemies at once when she attacks with her buffed state. So you're going to want to have all the enemies debuffed because you never know who you're going to pick out of those enemies. So Pele is, is your girl over someone like Silverwolf who could be helpful. However, Silverwolf is a single target um, debuffer, unfortunate for her, but Pele just kind of power crept her over time. Now, only do that if you're going to be running the Quantum set. I would stick to the Harmony characters if I was you in just about any scenario. So let me know if you're going to be pulling for Firefly. Obviously, her Eidolon 1 and 2 are going to be absolutely insane. But just so that you guys are aware, she's going to be incredibly powerful even at E0. So don't feel pressured whatsoever to pull for any Eidolons with any 5-star character. But obviously, there's going to be more temptation there with Firefly because those Eidolons are really strong. But again, E0 Firefly is going to be absolutely insane. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.